For decades, film producer Harvey Weinstein ruled Hollywood. He was also a notorious sexual predator, a barely concealed secret in the entertainment world until the New York Times exposed him in October 2017. The New York Times alleges that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of decades of sexual harassment. As his reputation began to crumble, he amassed the best lawyers money could buy, including this woman, Lisa Bloom. Bloom was known as a crusader against sexual assault, representing victims of powerful men like comedian Bill Cosby. To all the victims out there, never be silent, keep fighting. But Bloom was working for Weinstein, advising him how to discredit his accusers. She later quit and apologised. Very tired, tattered playbook. And that... Bloom's return to representing victims of sexual assault, including five of businessman Jeffrey Epstein's accusers. So you would have made that connection because you stayed with him, you were a visitor, a guest on many occasions at his home, mm. and nothing struck you as suspicious during that whole time. No. She's now calling for Epstein's friend, Prince Andrew, to provide evidence to US authorities about his connection to Epstein. Lisa Bloom, given that Jeffrey Epstein's now dead, what justice is available to the victims? Well, we can no longer see criminal accountability for Jeffrey Epstein, but what we can do is get some justice for the victims by compensating them for the lifelong injuries his sexual assaults caused to them, the derailment of their careers, their profound psychological injuries, the sexual problems that many of them have experienced, the emotional harm. So that's what we're doing now in going forward against the estate with civil claims. Prince Andrew has been the focus of a huge amount of attention, as we know. Can anything be done to compel him to cooperate with the US court process? No one should be above the law anywhere in the world, whether it's our American president who's currently being impeached or other world leaders who have legal consequences for their actions. And I believe that Prince Andrew, as a person accused himself of wrongdoing by Virginia Roberts Jufri, should be held accountable. He also may be a witness in many of the cases against the Epstein estate, including in my cases. He knew Epstein as early as 1999. Had he done something, had he said something, had he put a stop to it, my clients, whose incidents happened later, could have been spared. So I believe that subpoenas should be issued and he should be required to answer questions. And not only that, provide documents, information, calendars, journals, emails, travel logs, and have his staff answer questions as well so that we can get to the bottom of this. Prince Andrew can't have been the only man who was in Jeffrey Epstein's orbit. Who are the others and are they culpable? Well, there are, you're right, there are many other high profile men uh, ranging from Bill Clinton, to Donald Trump, uh, who were connected with Jeffrey Epstein. Now, simply knowing him uh, or you know, being at a party with him does not necessarily make them culpable, but the closer the relationship, surely the more that they knew. And many people say that Epstein was so open about his sexual abuse of women, sometimes as many as three girls a day were brought to him by recruiters, that it would be impossible for somebody with a close relationship not to know. So the FBI has said they're looking into that, and I hope that they are. You have extensive experience in sexual assault cases representing victims usually, and often those cases end in confidential settlements. In fact, there's been reporting recently that Harvey Weinstein is about to reach a confidential settlement with a payment uh, to women which will be kept private. Is it time to rethink the practice of confidential settlements as it is a system that protects men's secrets? It is definitely the time to rethink confidential settlements. So I own and run one of America's largest victims' rights law firms. And most of our cases end in settlements, but they do not have to be confidential settlements. And I sat in this very conference room yesterday with one of my clients who felt very strongly that she does not want a confidential settlement. And I said, then we're not going to have one in your case. I applaud that. I think it's important for victims to be able to tell their stories when and if they choose. You are one of the most well-known women's rights activists in the US. You mostly represent individuals against powerful entities. Your reputation took a huge hit in 2017 when it became known that you were working for the film producer Harvey Weinstein, advising him how to deal with allegations against him. What were you thinking doing that? 
Well, many attorneys represent both victims and accused persons. And at that time, my law practice was about 95% victims and about 5% accused. And as he acknowledged in his public statement, I was advising him to apologize for incidents that he acknowledged were wrong. And that's what he did. And I thought that was a good thing. And I would advise anyone who's accused of wrongdoing to own up to what you've done wrong, apologize, don't attack the victims, and make it right. Of course, once women went on the record accusing him of sexual assault, we were talking about something very different, and I immediately resigned. And I, at that point, took my law firm from 95% victim side to 100% victim side, and that's where we stayed. Well, the New York Times published a memo from you to Weinstein where you write, I feel equipped to help you against the Rose McGowans of the world because I've represented so many of them. You go on to say, they start out impressive, bold women, but the more one presses for evidence, the weakness and lies are revealed. Isn't the only conclusion that somebody can make hearing that, that you are prepared to use your experience representing vulnerable women to help Harvey Weinstein silence and discredit vulnerable women? Well, no, because if you look at what, I, and unfortunately, my hands are tied to a large extent because Mr. Weinstein has threatened to sue me if I speak out about what happened in the case, so I can't comment directly on that. What I can say is that what did happen in that case, which is a matter of public record, is that Harvey Weinstein apologized for what he did. And listen, there are a tiny number of accusers who are not credible, unfortunately. And I have hundreds of people who reach out to me every week for sexual assault cases, and some of them we determine are not credible. We, I would say probably 98% are credible, and we work very hard on behalf of those who we decide to represent, but there are some who are not. At that time, I did not believe, based on the public record, that she was credible. I have since changed my view and apologized because so many women had, since that time uh, came out with very similar stories to hers. So I appreciate all of the work that the journalists have done. They did it secretly behind the scenes. Couldn't know about it until the stories came out and, and bless them for the hard work that they did. And when, look, as you know, with anybody, when the facts change, I had to change. And when the facts changed that women were going on the record with credible claims of sexual assault, my goodness, I, I was devastated. I was heartbroken. I resigned. As I said, I apologized. Uh, to the women and redoubled our efforts and went 100% victim side. Although many attorneys, as I said, do represent victims and accused persons. Lisa Bloom, thanks for taking the time to speak to our audience. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.